Hi everybody, welcome to the offices of Bright Alive here in sunny Atlanta, Georgia. Today I'm going to give you a demo of the client portal and walk you through all the great features that we've been creating here over the past several months. But before I do that, I want to take a moment to discuss our motivation for creating the client portal. You know, our mission here at Bright Alive is to help support and foster the success of independent bridal boutiques all over the world. And you do that by helping you guys boost profits. And how do you boost profits? Well, if you don't want to increase your foot traffic, the way you boost profit, profits is by increasing your closing ratio and reducing the cost to service every single customer. And that's what the portal is all about. It's all about helping you extend your in-store experience to create a truly unique digital experience that makes it easier to market and manage the products and services that you sell. So let's go ahead and transition over to the computer and we'll take a look at the features of the client portal. Okay, so here we are in a test account here. And the first thing you have to do when, when working with the portal is to get things set up. So before we do that, we're gonna go down here to settings and choose client portal. Now this screen has everything that you need to get the client portal set up correctly. And there's several ways to configure the portal to accurately represent your brand messaging and your brand imaging. Um, <clears throat> before you get into the look and feel piece, you'll want to select the features that you'd like to utilize of the client portal. So there are several features. I'll go through them briefly here. We don't want to spend too much time in the settings area because I do want to show you everything that the portal has to offer as your brides see it and how you would use it on a day-to-day -day basis in your shop. So the first thing here is the, is the list of features that come with the program. So here you can select whether or not you want your brides to be able to see their order history, whether or not you want to enable the event management function, which allows your brides to nudge their members along the ordering process, whether you want to, to allow your clients to submit measurements through the portal, whether you want them to be able to see products that you have in your shop uh, through the lookbook and favorite specific dresses that you can then pull before the appointment, uh, whether you want to allow them to take payments, submit, I'm sorry, submit payments to your store, allow them to sign sales agreements, confirm and cancel an appointment, and also to require them to enter a PIN before accessing the portal. This is disabled by default just because um, it's easier to, to have a bride just sent a link where she's automatically logged in without having to manage a PIN or, or a password for them. But that option is available should you choose to, to use that. Okay, so as I mentioned, the portal can be set up to completely uh, represent your brand and your brand imaging. So there are several ways to customize the look and feel. The first is by uploading a logo. So I've just put our placeholder logo in here. The second way is to specify the colors and fonts that you'd like to use. So I'm particularly partial to the default purple that we have here at Bright Alive, but there are several other themes that you might choose from here. If your theme, if you can't find a theme that you like, then you can always very simply choose custom and then edit uh, and choose any particular color that you might want from this several thousands of color options. But I'm gonna go back to Bright Alive default here. You can also choose from a number of different fonts. So if you use a specific font on your website and you want Bright Alive to match that, we have several of the most popular fonts here. If the font you use on your website is different, just send us an email and we'll include it here in this list. When your members access, or when your clients access the portal, they will be greeted with a, what's called a hero image, which is this here. I've uploaded a custom hero image uh, that is a picture of one of our customers' stores that I happen to really like. But you also have the option of choosing from one of six of the predefined hero images uh, and you can loop through these and and see which one you might like if you don't have a picture of the inside of your shop. I'll keep it on custom here. You also have the option of choosing a greeting format so if you want to change how you greet the customer or completely hide it you can do that as well and you can also include the little subtext or a tagline here below your greeting. 
This allows you to create a nice welcoming for the clients that access your portal. All right, moving along through the setup process, for the shops that do bridesmaids or have been considering bridesmaids, um, the effort that it takes to manage a bridesmaids party might be something that has uh, turned you away from doing bridesmaids in your shop. But uh, the event management feature is something that will really help you streamline the work it takes to, to process a wedding party through your store. So how it works is basically you set up your ordering process. This is the default ordering process that comes out of the box with the client portal. First, a, an event member has to submit their measurements. That can either be online or in person with you, but once that step is done, a progress indicator will be shown to the bride that shows that the bridesmaid has conducted that activity. We'll look at all this in a minute. Then she has to place her order with you, then she has to make a deposit, and then finally pay the balance. So this can be set up and changed. You can also configure which email or text messages are sent to the member based on a list of templates. Several templates come already with the portal. But this would be a request for measurements that can be sent uh, via email. And this is one that would be sent via text message. So when your brides click the send reminder button within their portal, their members will receive the message here that you've selected. Inside each one of these messages, there will be a link to perform the action that the bride is trying to get her member to do. So that puts your brides to work for you rather than you working so much for your brides. It helps you reduce the cost of managing a wedding party. The next tab here is the client notifications. And this is basically just tells Bride Alive what emails or which text messages you would like to have sent to the client when you approve something that they submit through the portal. So for instance, when a measurements request is approved, when you receive measurements as a, through a new notification up here in Bride Alive, when you receive the new notification, you will, um, when you approve the notification, I mean, you will then automatically send out an email to or a text message to the bride that lets her know that her request was approved. This can further increase engagement with the portal by redirecting her back into the portal where she can do other things like continue to nudge her members along or look, go to the lookbook, look at her order history, anything that you might want to encourage her to do. Under advanced settings, we have a several, several different options here. By default, everything is, is disabled, uh, except with, for the ability to uh, allow members to leave notes on the, on the lookbook. We'll look at that in a minute. But all the general settings where you can hide navigation and just tweak the look and feel even further of the portal is available. Some of the more notable ones here is down on the measurements area. You can have a, uh, some help text above the measurements that just gives your, your clients information as to how you would like them to be measured, whether that's self-measured or maybe you want them to be measured at another bridal store or at a seamstress. You can just give them instructions on how to successfully obtain their measurements outside of your shop. And then you also have the option of including a, an agreement. It just requires them to check a box uh, when they submit their measurements to you. So those are the setup, the settings for the client portal setup. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at how you set up the lookbook so that you can accurately uh, portray your products on the portal. And we're going to go ahead and do that with a couple of our vendors that we have set up in here. So if we go over to search items, I'll just say I don't want to change anything. We'll go over to search items. So what I want to do is I want to put all of our bridal gowns from Allure on the portal and then I want to put all our bridesmaids dresses from Essence on the portal as well. And so we're going to walk you through how to do that. So the, there's a bulk action that allows you to update the lookbook visibility. So <clears throat> I'm going to go in here and just say, I want to find all our lower bridal gowns. Change this to all. Click this button here to select all of them. I have 269 items. I'm going to go ahead and change the lookbook visibility to show on lookbook. Now, you do have the option through the advanced settings to only show the items that you have in the store. So you'll never have a bride say that she likes something that you don't have in the shop. Uh, that's just an advanced setting. You can turn that on at any time. 
So I've gone ahead and enabled all the bridal gowns for Allure to be placed in our lookbook. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and specify uh, that I want all the bridesmaids' dresses from Essence to be in the lookbook as well. So we'll do that. Join lookbook, yes. And so each item has this new option here called Show on Lookbook. And this is the option that you can click uh, on an item level if you want to turn on or turn off the ability for the uh, dress to be shown on the lookbook. All right. So I'll jump back out here. One other thing that you can set up is the filtering options in the lookbook. And we're going to look at this in just a minute. But if you want to allow your brides to filter by designer on the lookbook, you, for each designer, you can enable them to appear within the lookbook. So I'm going to do that. And I want to do that for Essence as well. And here it is. Save. OK. And I also want to do the same thing for our departments, because I want our brides to be able to look at and segment the bridal gowns and the bridesmaids' dresses on the lookbook. So we'll do that just by checking that box. So now our portal has been set up. Uh, pretty simple. It's just a matter of getting your settings in place and getting everything just right. Uh, the next step that we're going to do is actually take a look at what the portal looks like for your customers. So there are several ways that your customers can access the portal. One is through just a general invite via email. You might want to include that invite in your appointment confirmation and reminder emails or text messages. The other way is by accessing it through the customer portal. So this is our test account. I'm going to go ahead and I'm oh, sorry, through the client profile. So I'm going to add a new, new customer here, Anita Portal. And she has a phone number. I'll just put that in there. And email at anita at bridalive.com. I'm going to save and close. And then I'll, well, I could have saved and opened. But I'm going to go into her profile here. And let me just make sure all this gets on the screen correctly. going to get this sized for you guys. So you can see everything. OK. All right, so now you'll notice that once you have the portal enabled, you have an option over here on the left that allows you to open the portal for the customer. So you can actually act on behalf of the customer at any time. So if you want to open this customer's portal, we'll just do this. And now we are logged in as this particular person into the portal. So the first thing it does when you don't have the customer's event information, it, it asks them and prompts them to register their event. This is the self-registration feature that we've talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and register this person's event. I'm going to put two members in the wedding party. And then I'm going to submit it to the shop. And we're going to take a look at how that registration process works all the way through. So first, I'll say that I'm in a wedding. And I'm getting married October 27th. And married in the afternoon. It's a semi-formal event. I have a $3,000 gown budget. And you can see the bride is given feedback as to where she is in this registration process. This will encourage her to, you know, that there's only a few steps remaining, and she'll complete those. So I'm going to create a couple members. I'll just put some people that I'm familiar with here. This is the maid of honor. And Rachel at. And we will put 666. Save that member. Add another member. And this is going to be Lindsay Phillips. This is a bridesmaid. And I'll put her phone number in there as well. And save the member. 
Okay. So now we have two members in the party. And we'll continue on. And she's just asked to confirm her information here and then submit to store. So this is going to get submitted. We'll just say yes. And now the event registration has been complete. So now she's going to go about exploring the portal. One thing she might want to do, of course, she's given feedback here that her event registration is awaiting approval. But one thing that she might want to do is to go ahead and browse the lookbook, right, and see what styles she might like. So here we've, like we did earlier, we went ahead and turned on all the Allure items to uh, be visible here in the lookbook. Allure is one of our marketplace partners, and they've sent us all their collection information. Um, but if she wants to filter, she can do that. So she has the option to filter down by designer, because we've turned that on a little while ago. And she can also go by category and by price and by silhouette if you have those options. And you can disable all these features in the advanced settings area if you'd like. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and favor the bridal gown because we're going to walk through just a typical bride process here. So I'll just say 8526 is a dress that I like. She can click on the details of the item and she can say, you know, I love the um, ruching, right? I guess. Um, and that message has been successfully saved. So now inside of Bridal Live, you'll be able to see these notes that she added about each style. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. <clears throat> so she can continue browsing the portal. At some point, she'll, she'll, she will no longer. Um, need to be in the portal and she'll close out her tab. And what will happen is if we fast forward into your shop, I'm going to refresh the screen because every five minutes the notifications come in, but I'm going to refresh the screen. And now we're using the portal features within Bridal Live that are going to be available to everybody very soon. So you'll have a new notifications icon up here at the top and it shows you that a new event registration was submitted by Anita Portal. And you can click that and see everything that was submitted. So here you can see everything that is different than what you have on files. So everything that's highlighted in yellow is different than what you have currently on file for this customer. So this just gives you a heads up of what information you're going to be changing. And then over on the right, it lets you know what members that she has submitted for her wedding party. These are the two members that we added just a minute ago. And Bridal Live will ask you to either link these members to an existing contact or to add a new contact um, for these members. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a new contact. It pre-fills everybody's in, all their information in there. I'll just save and close that. Pre-fills it all again. Save and close that. So now there's really no action left to take other than to update our event information. So as soon as we do this, updated our event information. I'll just go back over to search contacts and go to Anita portal here. And now we can see that our event details are here. Our members are here. All the event information that was submitted is, is available as well. We will also see that there are favorites for this person. So she has favorites here. We have a new favorites view uh, that allows you to look at the images. You can also look at the notes. Here's the notes that were submitted. You can also look at it in the list view as well. And if she comes into the store and tries it on, you can go ahead and mark it as something that was tried on. And then as soon as you do that, when you go back into the portal and she visits the portal again, you'll see now that it's indicated as it's been tried on. And now that you've approved her event information, her members are visible here to her as well. The timeline lets her know that you approved the event registration, and then also that she had submitted it just a minute ago. So that's, that's that particular portion of it. One thing to note is that all of the submissions that come from the portal, just like all the other tools, uh, are all categorized up here now under online tools. So you have all your uh, forms, web form submissions that you're used to, which are listed here. And then we put a divider in place, and all of these options here are things that can happen through the portal. So an event registration is visible there. I did one earlier today. And then we have Anita portal here. And you can always view it or, or delete it if you would like. But it's 
best to just keep them in place. So everything's always categorized. Every, all the submissions, whether they're payment submissions, signatures, measurements, or if somebody wants to update their profile, that's all uh, available in there as well. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into this favorite here. I'm sorry, we're going to go into Anita's profile. And we'll go ahead and create a, fa uh, a special order from the favorite and take a look at the process for requesting payment and requesting signatures. So we'll go here to create a special order. And I'll just assign the associate. I'll put a color of ivory in here, size 16. And I didn't have the prices in for 85.26, so I'll just put 14.99 in there. All right, and uh, you know you can put notes and anything else as you're used to doing with any other bride alive order. Um, but now we'll say you know that she's in the shop. You had just worked the appointment. She's going to go ahead and place her deposit. I'll just do a cash deposit um, here. Um, but you'll notice that we have this option for request payment now. So you'll go through the typical ordering process where she'll sign the sales agreement and she'll leave the, sh the shop. Um, but if this happened to be an order that you took maybe online via your e-commerce site or an order that you took over the phone where you needed to request payment um, for the order, then you can use the request payment feature. So I'll go ahead and show you that now. So when you click request payment, Bright Alive is going to ask you first, how much do you want to request? It might not be the balance due. It might be some other amount. So you could put, let's just say we're going to do $250. If you're doing a layaway payment or something like that, you have the option of, of having this request go to a different contact, but by default, it's, it sends to the contact on the transaction. You also have the option of requiring a sales agreement signature along with this payment. And not only requiring the sales agreement, but you can specify which sales agreement. So if you have a custom sales agreement for bridesmaids or a custom sales agreement maybe for tuxedos, then you can do that through this particular feature. I'm just going to choose the, the, the default one. And then you can have, uh, you can choose the delivery method, right? So you can have the, the message go out via email or via SMS. I have got SMS disabled on this account, so we'll just do it all via email. So when you choose email, it'll just ask you which email template do you want to send. So you can set up, you know, customized email templates, but like I showed earlier, the portal comes with several email templates out of the box. I think it's something like eight email templates now. Uh, so we'll just specify that we want the client portal payment signature and request to go out. And then we'll choose send. All right, so it's been sent. So if we go back to Anita's profile and look at the messages, we will see that well, she got this client notification when we approved her event registration, but she also just got this email that says important information regarding your order. Make a payment and sign sales agreement. So it says, hi, thank you for your purchase. In order to move forward with your order, we need to first, uh, you need to first place a deposit and sign the sales agreement, et cetera. So we'll click that link. And so instead of going over to my email, I'm just clicking the link off of the actual email in Bridal Live. And now it takes her directly to the Make a Payment page inside the portal. So she could navigate away from this if she wanted. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and enter some fake credit card details. Next on that, so this is actually submitting the payment through your existing merchant account company. So actually, I should, I should talk a little bit more about this. So currently, the portal works with Chargeit Pro because they offer the ability to process cards online through their gateway product. And then also Stripe, which is a more of a generic, um, generic uh, all-around online payment um, system that's used very often online. So you can set up either of those in your Bride Alive account. And once you do that, the, the payment functionality will be available. 
so once they've made the payment, that's gone through successfully, then they have the option of signing the sales agreement. So they'll read through the sales agreement, and then they can go ahead and sign with their mouse. Or if they're on their phone, they would just sign right there with their phone. So sign and accept. All that has been done. And so now if you were to go back into Bright Alive, and I'll dismiss this notification, and we'll have the next two pop in. One, letting us know that the payment was made. If you click the payment amount, it takes you directly to the order. And what you'll see is that the, the sales agreement was also signed. As you notice, the, the ink is in black, and that tells you that it was signed through the portal. And the payment was also obtained through the portal. And there it is. So that is the payment and signature functionality. And this can be used in so many different ways. If you, like I mentioned, if you received an e-commerce order, you can, you can have it work that way. If you uh, have a layaway plan and you want to go ahead and fire off emails to everybody whose payment is due, you can do that. Uh, there are several ways that you can use Bright Alive now. Instead of picking up the phone and saying, hey, your payment is due, or setting up PayPal or some other third-party payment system, and then having to organize all that information back into Bright Alive, it just becomes an administrative nightmare. Now everything is categorized all in one place, and you don't have to go around chasing paper all over the place. Okay, so th that was the lookbook function. That was the request a payment and request a signature function. What we want to talk about next is the event management function. So as you noticed, after we were done on the client portal, uh, after we had approved the, the bride's event registration, she is now shown an event overview. And she's shown this on her dashboard page, but she's also shown more information on her event, My Event page. So from her My Event page, she can request an update to her event. So let's say you know, she no longer likes uh, Rachel. She wants somebody else to be in the event. She can remove members, add members, and resubmit an updated event information to you. So this way, you're always staying up to date uh, as to what your brides have, what members they have in their party, and you're always receiving notifications in Bridal Live when something changes. So that's a really nice feature. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. Um, but the most important part of this is, is how you put your brides to work for you. So the way you do that is by setting up all your event management steps like we showed before, and then setting up your event your ordering process will show the bride what the next step for that bridesmaid is. So this particular these two particular bridesmaids have yet to submit their measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just hit send reminder to both of these members and go back into Bridal Live to see the email that was sent to Rachel instead of going to Rachel's email address, which I don't have in here. So I'll just put Esposito in here, and there's way too many. I'll do Rachel, and the phone number is 66. OK. So here's the, here's the profile for this particular bridesmaid. And we notice that she's got an email that says, please submit your measurements. So if we take a look at that, it'll say, it's time to get measured. Please click the link below to send us your measurements. So we're going to open that in a new tab. And then it asks them, are you doing a dress or a tuxedo? You don't have to have it ask, but the template that we chose was client's choice for the measurements. And that is when you just want it to be flexible and allow them to select whatever they want. So we'll hit that we want to get measured for a dress. And you'll see that this is the measurements page, all the measurements that are available inside of Bridal Live. You have the messaging that we, we set up earlier on the advanced settings page. So use the form below to submit your measurements. This is all HTML capable. So if you want to put links to maybe your measuring guidelines or some other uh, site with maybe all your size charts on it or something like that, you can do that. You can also put HTML links to your terms and conditions for measurements if you'd like to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and specify some measurements here. Uh, 
and we'll just leave it at that. Uh, you also have the option on the measurements page to change the measurements guide. Um, if you'd like to use more of a gender neutral measurements option, you can do that. If you want to hide it completely, you can do that as well. Uh, there are a lot of options here. So I'll go ahead and submit my measurements. And you're, you notice here up the top, this is the bridesmaids or the members view of the portal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and submit my measurements. Oh, I haven't checked the box. Submit the measurements. The measurements have been submitted successfully. If we were to go in now and dismiss our notification, we will see that measurements were submitted by Rachel. And we can simply copy these to the contact. And if we go over to Rachel's measurements, there they are. And if we go back to the portal for, let's make sure we stay organized. We're acting on behalf of several people. If we refresh the event information for Anita's profile, we'll see that Rachel's next step is to place her order. So, and you'll also notice there's no send reminder button. That's because the place order option that we've set up out of the box requires the bride, or the bridesmaid to call the shop and uh, place her order. So if you'd like to have an email sent to the bride to place her order, then you can do that as well. It's just a matter of setting up the options to reflect that. All right. So that is the event management step. And as you can tell, um, this progress bar will progress all the way through until this member has completed all of your steps. So in order to complete the steps, we'd have to register an item, go ahead and get the special order created for that member. And as the, that process was happening, the, um, the progress bar would, would show further along in the process. All right, so that's the overview of the portal. We saw the lookbook. We saw the request payment and signatures. We saw the My Event screen. Um, there are a few other options, like the ability for members to request profile updates. Maybe they want to opt into messaging or change their address or phone numbers that you have on file. They can request updates there. Uh, you can also explicitly request measurements from somebody without having to have the the bride do it just by clicking on request measurements and specifying which template you would like to have sent to that person. So if you want dress measurements, you can send that person a dress measurements request very easily by going to the measurements tab and then clicking uh, request measurements. All right, so that's the overview of the portal. Look forward to seeing any comments that you have in the uh, Facebook post. And if you have any questions, please reach out. We are here to help. We're going to be rolling out this product um, over the next few days. Uh, there have been several of you who have expressed interest, and we're going to make sure that everybody is contacted and we walk you through how to get it set up. We want to make sure that everybody gets the most out of this product as you move forward into the coming busy, busy season. Well, I look forward to seeing everybody at the trade shows this year, and if you have questions, just feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day, and we will talk to you soon. Take care.